So path roughness is another interesting one that we've done. Um, and this is motivated very directly by uh, the Dragon Hound demo that you may have seen at GDC this past year. Um, basically, not all bounces are equal. Right? The Dragon Hound guys, most games probably don't want more than one bounce for their reflections in most scenes because, I mean, you look around this room, there are not a whole lot of places where you're going to see a very clear uh, secondary bounce uh, once, you, once, you, once you get off that, that first bounce. Um, and not all bounces are equal because every time you bounce, you potentially hit a somewhat rougher surface and that you know, reduces the, basically the fidelity of what you can see in that bounced reflection. Um, and so... And if you think about it, roughness already has fallbacks uh, to fall back to, uh, say, reflection probes, things like that. So as we do you know, this multiple bounces, we need to start thinking about like, what the total roughness across the path is. And we've done this with this path roughness optimization, where we accumulate this roughness along the, uh, the ray uh, while we're tracing the reflection. Um, and we test against the roughness at every bounce. And it terminates the path early if it's rough enough. So it allows you know, a, a Big improvement to glossy, glossy interactions, right? So if it's mirror, mirror, well, uh, obviously you're not going to get a lot of uh, degradation there. But most of the time you're going to at best have glossy versus glossy uh, or, you know, mirror versus glossy. And then this is, well, actually then stacks nicely with uh, probe sampling uh, fallback that we, uh, we cherry picked from uh, dev rendering that'll, that'll be in 423. And so what you end up getting is like, so if we have, you know, the if we have no path, none of this path roughness optimization on, we, we do three bounces in realistic rendering. This is what it looks like. And if we still, if we turn that on, it looks like this. Um, I challenge you to find the, you know, 10 pixels where it really is different. The interesting thing is all of a sudden we're 3x three, three faster. And now you can handle more, uh, you know, if you do have content like what the, uh, the Dragon Hound guys had with that required a couple of bounces in a, in a few cases, those few cases are going to get those couple bounces that they need. You're going to get the right image, but you're not going to be necessarily having to pay as much for the rest of the uh, for for the rest of everything else that's going on there. Um, clear code's another place where we've we've you know found some interesting optimizations. Um, for those not familiar, it's a two-layer material model in UE4, just like for clear coat paint, but it gets used a lot of uh, for a lot of other things like a wet look. Um, if you're uh, have any familiar with the Soul City uh, content from the uh, marketplace, uh, basically everything in the world has been spray painted with clear coat to allow uh, variable wetness on all the different surfaces. Um, but full evaluation requires two rays in the reflections. And that means you know, a top and a bottom ray, which means actually more than 2x the cost because you've got extra state that you know, is being saved around uh, to uh, composite the results between the two of them. So, the clear coat optimizations kind of come in two layers, right? First, treat the material as a normal material, not a clear coat material, if the clear coat is below a threshold, right? So artists are you know, merging multiple materials together potentially where part of it is really clear coat and part of it is not really clear coat. So if, it's, if the clear coat has less, you know, less than a 2% effect on the material, you, you're not going to be able to see it. So just fall back and use the, uh, the, you know, the under layer and you're going to get uh, exactly what you want. And this, this deals with like variable wetness, like you've got a wet patch on concrete. Well, now this whole concrete slab has a clear coat material on it. You don't want to shoot two rays for that whole concrete slab, right? Um, and then additionally, after the end bounce, and bounce, fall back to a reflection probe for the bottom layer. This is actually what screen space reflections has been doing for a long time in UE4. Um, it's not as accurate, but typically it's good enough. And you can think of like in your, race, in your racing game, um, you probably don't care as you're running around the track uh, about the undercoat uh, bounce, basically, right? It's, you care that it's there, but a probe is probably good enough to give you good fidelity. But when you're in the showroom mode, when you're like taking a beauty look at the car, you might want both of those rays to get you a really, really accurate look. Now you can toggle that one, you can toggle it back on to get you uh, the, be the better look in that, uh, that high quality shot. And what this actually looks like is, well, here is the unoptimized version uh, with just some uh, sample clear coat spheres that I had, uh, had worked on for when I was testing this stuff out. And, uh, you know, here's the optimized version. And it's, you know, it's over twice as fast, right? Um, and uh, you, you really can't tell the difference.